Hi, I'm Eric Dewey. And this is Steve O'Mooney. And I'm Matthew Renfro. And we're Socially Awkward. You're listening to another great production on the Four Eyed Radio Network. Check out more shows at foureyedradio.com. It's your good pal, Steve-O, from the 4i Radio Network. I'm here to talk to you about a wonderful designer we all know, uh, Revenge Lover. Illustrates and designs that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, please visit revengelover.com. And just do yourself a favor and tell them Steve-O sent you. I know it really doesn't count for anything, but, I mean, come on. Who's gonna, who are you going to trust? You're going to trust somebody else? No, you're going to trust me, Steve-O. Because, face it, I'm awesome. The following is intended for mature audiences. It includes references to the use of illicit substances as well as crude humor. Listener discretion is advised. Hey everybody, this is Johnny Dim. Well, if you've never been here before, this is The War Pod. Uh, We talk about all kinds of nerd stuff and gaming stuff, and in this particular episode we talk a lot about movies and TV. Anyway, I wanted to remind you guys real quick that we are doing Extra Life again, the 24-hour gaming marathon. It will happen on November 7th at 8 a.m. in the morning, and we'll go for 24 hours straight. We will be talking about that more in the next few weeks, but I just wanted to give you a heads up there. You can check out our team that we've put together and join our team if you if you actually want to do the 24-hour marathon with us. Just go to extra-life.org forward slash team forward slash warlocks. Always, you can always check us out and see what else we're doing on warlocksentertainment.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, which is at warlocksbrew. All right, guys, enjoy the show. I, th- I think you're going to do music with this. Boom, 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 boom. Bung 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 Just include that. Welcome to the Chone Zone, America. Space City Nerd. The Four Eyed Radio Network. Musings of a Geek and the Houston Nerdcasting Collective are proud to present The War Pod. I'm Zach Nanimus. I'm Johnny Dim. Let's get started. Tonight, we are going to be talking about Zack Snyder bringing Watchmen to HBO as a series of programming. The X-Files has its imminent and, would you say, meteoric return? Yes. And finally, we're going to talk about how they're taking Westworld and they're turning it to porn. But first... We are having a very special review. It's a kind of review that we've never actually done before on the show, uh, to my knowledge. Normally, we, um, if we're going to review any sort of a, I guess, I guess in video game logic, you would call it a consumable. Right. Um, Usually, it's uh, it's you consuming beer. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it's why Jayfree's leaving you. But today, um, we are actually going to be reviewing a food item. Yeah, I think it's the I think it's the first time. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good, good stuff. Good stuff, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> um, I am going to be uh, doing a, uh, a quick review of the Burger King Halloween Racist Whopper. Whopper. First off, black people are the color brown. <laughs> I'm going to say that right I'm now. I'm sorry. I didn't even plan on saying <laughs> that. It was just, as you are describing it, I just... It, it, is a, yeah. it, is a, it is a Whopper with bread that has been dyed nightshade black. Right, and this is not the first season in which they are doing that. They did this uh, in Japan, uh, actually, first. They used um, um, octopus ink. Or is squid, that edible? Or squid ink, one of the two. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's just black number six. Right. And, in rat, America, and, yeah. And rat poison. Right. <laughs> the worst thing they can think of. I, I'd actually I, I'd actually read a review of the, uh, the one they did in Japan, and it, it apparently tastes weird. I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's biological afflu- uh, afflusia. Right. Um, but the reason that I was so interested in this one was really because of a book that I read when I was a kid. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was part of the Goosebumps series. Uh-huh. And it was like Carnival of Death or something like that. And they had not chocolate ice cream, not, dar- not dark chocolate I- ice cream, but literally black ice cream. Mm-hmm. And I've always, I don't, I, I think olives may be the only black food that I've ever eaten. Okay. I'm, 
Well, okay, black black licorice, but that's candy, you know. Yeah, um, it's edible. It is food, but it's not like a. It's not something you buy at a restaurant. Are, are there not restaurants that sell um, licorice rope? Restaurants? I don't think so. What about candy the- stores, uh, places that sell licorice, like Walmart. What about the cheesed cake factory? I don't think so. Okay. Maybe maybe as a topping. You know, we're we're getting way far off the subject here. <clears throat> yeah, I apologize. Also, I'm getting over being sick, so I sound a little off. Oh, I'm I'm getting sick. You know what? Okay. <laughs> so we gotta stop making out. Huh? So we eat nothing. No. Hmm. No, I, don't stop making out. Not at all. Oh. <laughs> I, I need that Mennonite sass that you've got hanging off your chin. <laughs> it's like a little massage for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no. Okay. So I'm gonna grab my burger. Ooh. You can hear the bag. You know it's legit. <laughs> I forgot how big these things are. That's what she said. <laughs> I, I I also apologize for that joke. I'm not going to make very many of those. God, it looks like I can already see it through, through the wrapper. Yeah, it's so dark. It's kind of scary. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. It is. Uh, that is black. This is a black burger. That not look like it could be eaten. <laughs> That's the thing. They could like se- they could sell this particular Whopper in any stage of decay, and they'd be like, oh, "Yeah, it's supposed to look like that." <laughs> <laughs> How hard is it? Um, um, now, is it? O- are they only doing it? Ooh, he's taking a bite. Uh, are they only doing it as a Whopper, or can you get it with most sandwiches? They were only selling it as a Whopper. Only the Whopper, okay. That's what they were advertising on the big... The Whopper's, the Whopper's a different size. Yeah. Um, this is an A1. Uh, that's right, they said there was A1 in the bun as well. So you get it, there's, there's supposed to be a flavor in the bun. The taste, yeah, you get a taste of the bun, just the bun itself. Yeah. The sound of you eating, I'm sure, is great. Yeah. <laughs> <Over> the, <laughs> <podcast>. <laughs> Here, let me breathe a little harder while I bite. <laughs> <laughs> heavy breathing, cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, end result. I'm sure everybody enjoyed this segment very much. <laughs> um, wait, 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 wait. What? I'm not going to finish it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know. What I was going to say was, you always give me a scale, so I was going to give you a scale. Okay. I'm really bad at this, so. I already got one. Oh, go. Do it. Okay. On a scale from one being... No, just one, two, and you have to come uh, up with the end. One, it, two, Burger King's A1. No, called? you mean Whataburger. You said that. Burger King. Oh, I meant, so, so I meant she, water, yeah. I so one to the A1 thick, thick and hearty of from Whataburger. If you don't live in a Whataburger state, you don't know what we're talking about. But uh, Whataburger is one of the best burger burger places seen ever. Them in Louisiana. Oh, no, they're in other states. They're just not. They're still in the South. I think it's Oklahoma, Louisiana, and uh, Texas mostly. Uh, they're they started in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. Um. So I, I, it's difficult for me to judge because the nth degree on scale is something that I never experienced. I've never, you've never had one. Never had that burger. Um, oh god. So in that case, uh, I'm gonna go with um, Junior Bacon Classic from Wendy's. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a it's a Junior Bacon. I like classic. I like Junior Bacon's. I was about I was about to go uh, Ultimate Cheeseburger from Jack in the Box. Right. But that's 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 a golden boy. That's, that's a golden boy <laughs> for you. That's a golden boy. Love I like those too. I do like those too. Yeah, it's not as good as that. It's it. But I put Wendy's above Jack in the Box myself. Now there was something that we dropped about um, what, uh, what we were talking about. The bun is supposed to have a flavor. Right. It is incredibly subtle. Okay. If it exists at all, I might be telling myself. It's supposed to taste this way, so I'm perceiving it. Right. Um, it's a Whopper. I'll try. I was going to ask you how how different of, from a normal Whopper does it taste, and it's just not that different. No, not at all. Yeah, I mean, it's which is doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's a it's just a um, a gimmick to get people to to buy some Halloween themed Whoppers. Now you know what they could have done. They could have thrown some candy corn in there. They would have sold some, I bet. Oh yeah. They would have. Yeah. Hey, I I would buy one just to give to somebody else as a prank because I hate candy corn. I feel like you can just buy Whoppers and candy corn. 
<laughs> Here, I bought you a burger. You know what I really like? Every once in a while, they'll do, um, they'll have posts where they're talking about, like, evil geniuses, and you'll see a bowl of M&Ms, and there's an empty bag of M&Ms and Skittles next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. They'll be disappointed. How about, uh, also, uh, plaque candy. The hell is that? Plaque candy is this candy that they used to give out at the dentist, and you eat the candy, and it dyes plaque pink, so you know where oh, to God. brush. That sounds awful. It does sound awful. Uh, I was about to say, what you didn't, uh, you didn't know that, but that's actually me literally quoting the show where I heard it from. That was <laughs> The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Oh, where they had that candy? Yeah. So it's probably not even a real thing. No, it's a real thing. It was like the sh- the the joke wasn't about the plat candy. It was about the kid who preferred plat candy. Like oh, he always Jesus. had some on him. He's always eating. That's it. weird. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I digress. That was our uh, that was our, our first ever uh, burger review. Highly anticipated is what is what comes to mind. I, oh we get, yeah, we get asked about that all the time. Why don't you uh, review the food? Halloween Whopper? Specifically. Right, specifically that one. Yeah, I had a brick thrown through my window. Yeah, only to find out that it was a Halloween Whopper, and I took that as a sign. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so you guys can stop doing that now. Jeez, are you are you happy? Okay, so uh, on to the real agenda. They're never happy. It was ju- we just happened to do this at lunchtime. So. <laughs> um, no, okay. So one thing that we learned uh, really yesterday mm-hmm. was that uh, Zack Snyder plans to bring The Watchmen to HBO as a series. Right. That that is that is true. And uh, one one um, one thing. What. You said that is true, and so I was going to continue that song from 1776. But if I'm the one to do it, okay. they'll run their quill pins through it. I'm obnoxious and disliked. Did you know that? I know now. Um, That's why I say you should write it, J. Dim. Thank you. Yes, you, Johnny Dim. You. What? You. What? You. I'm not singing. Mr. Yeah. Nanners. But, Mr. Nanners, oh, <laughs> I have been greeted with... Okay, that's enough! That's enough! <laughs> I'm calling that one. That's enough. Oh, boy. Uh, what, I, what, what, what the hell was I... Oh, I remember what I was going to say. There was one thing that I read in there, um, in the article that I read about it, that said, yes, um, there, is be, there is a script being written um, and pitched, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Because the, HBO gets pitched stuff all the time. Um, this one just apparently made the news. Well, I think it made the. I, I, I think that being the case, it made the news because it is a crazy marketable idea. Yeah, everybody would like the circumstances to lend themselves mm-hmm. to more Watchmen content. Right. Everyone would prefer that to be our reality. It's not. Well, <laughs> the, the other thing backing that up that helps us try to uh, build that reality and 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 hope for that series to happen is that game of thrones is reaching a final season and soon so there's that it needs hbo needs another big uh show to get people uh, wrapped up in i don't think this is the way to do it i honestly don't um, what would you do instead to replace game of thrones i mean my go-to answer for all for that is always new ip yeah. Don't don't get your hopes don't, up. Don't no. Don't do, don't well, do an established something. Right. But what I was gonna say was I said, I said don't get your hopes up. But um, HBO is actually fairly good at coming up with new stuff. Um. Um. You know what I think we need? Um. A really well done. Uh, sci-fi fantasy. Yes. That's what we need. Well, we have one coming to sci-fi. Remember we uh we interviewed um Cass. Ka- Cass Anvar. Yeah. Um. That's supposed to be really good. But that's not a sci-fi fantasy. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Well, it's more realistic than sci- than fantasy, I guess. Yeah. We need... You want something like space opera, like... I want Buck Rogers. Yeah. That's what I want. Okay. Um, yeah, I would I would say, you know, 
maybe Buck Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> a redo of Buck Rogers? Yeah, maybe Buck Rogers. Well, that's completely against what you just said. You said you wanted a new IP. I, I do want a new IP. And the thing is, to make to make Buck Rogers be marketable now, you'd have to change pretty much everything. Pretty much. But you could still do it. Or uh, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Or Flash! Ah, center of the universe! I don't know how... I don't know how it goes. Um, anyway. Like, think of every action movie subtitle that's ever existed, and it's a line. <laughs> of in, the song? In, in that song. <laughs> Savior of the universe! Yeah. He'll save every one of us! Secret of the ooze! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like that idea. I like the idea of of doing, of going that, that <coughs> excuse me. And that seems natural, actually, coming off of Game of Thrones, because mm-hmm. you're going a completely different direction. You don't want to do another medieval fantasy, obviously. Um, I think, yeah, something along that vein, something with Space Cowboys. Space Cowboys are good. Oh, maybe like a, uh, I don't necessarily believe it has to be a new IP, uh, but could you imagine like a live action Cowboy Bebop series? That would be awesome. The style or literally Cowboy Bebop? They can take liberties, I don't care. Just no. that, just the overall arcing theme. What I mean is, you have the same, you have literally the same characters by name, or just take airs from Cowboy Bebop and make something similar. I think I'd prefer B. Um, okay. I uh, I think I'd prefer that, but either one, I think if done correctly, would be awesome. Because um, Cowboy Bebop fits into this weird uh, niche of like 1970s like cop drama. It does. A little it's bit. very groovy. Everybody's an anti-hero. Everything's gritty, and every and everybody's from the city. Yeah, you know, and that that would be interesting. It kind of it, it reminds me of uh, man. I'm I'm trying to decide if I can say this. I feel like I can say it, um, mostly because it was lighthearted, and they made the point that you're not supposed to say this kind of thing. Uh, but it was a skit on SNL, Dyke and Fats. Uh huh. Have you seen that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Le- uh, Les Dykowitz and Chubina Fazzarelli. Yes. Are- <laughs> I saw one, one, one sketch of that, yeah. Oh, they only had one. Oh, they did? Yeah. I, I thought that would be like a reoccurring character. So that, that sounds like a fun thing to do on SNL. It was weird. It was like this one thing that they did when Louis C.K. was on. Right. He had nothing to do with the sketch. Yep. Except <sighs> deliver the setup for the punchline. Um But, yeah, to go to go that groovy, but then again... What can you do with Watchmen but go groovy? Right. I mean, if you're going to put in the fan favorite, which is Rorschach, it's got to be a prequel. Yeah. Unless Doctor Man hadn't, Doctor Doctor Man hadn't reassembles the, him. Doctor Man hadn't at the end of the movie uh, says that he's uh, he has a new appreciation for life and he's going to go make some. Right. And he can see into his own future, so he knows that he's not blowing smoke. Yeah, he knows he can do this and will do it. I think I think a sequel to Watchmen, like a, like something that happens post the Watchmen movie and and uh, graphic novel, I think post that that uh, story is the more interesting route to go. I don't want to go backwards in that world. Mm-hmm. I think it's been too interesting. Like I haven't watched, I haven't even read or uh, yeah, I haven't read the uh, graphic novel that went backwards. What? In Watchmen, we establish that it's perfectly okay to have a character take someone else's mantle. So we could just have a new Rorschach. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I think because of what happened in that comic, it, it was so awesome. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the it hit such a climax that I don't want to go back because it's never going to be as good as the Watchmen story. At least that's my interpretation of it. I don't necessarily want to know where they came from. I read enough of that in the uh, in the graphic novel. I want to go forward. I want to see where they go after that. <sighs> Lady Rorschach. Lady Rorschach's the only way to bring it, to bring that character back. I I hope they listen to this because dude, that's an amazing idea, dude. Okay, so uh, set uh, set it ten, uh, ten years in the future, and Lady uh, Lady Rorschach is a victim of abuse. Yes. You remember that was Rorschach's big thing. It was a big you know, thing. You don't mess with kids. You're right. And so she's the one that Rorschach missed. And maybe maybe even Rorschach failed in the attempt to rescue her. Yes. And so she's out to be a better Rorschach. You're writing this down, right? 
Yeah. It's right in my whopper. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's okay. Never mind. I'm 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 completely on board as long as I. We get sold ourselves to, by writing the to, show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think if we tweet this out, we'll uh, we'll be able to get <laughs> to get. Well, I, I will definitely uh, tweet out and and bring it to the attention of the Twitter accounts of the respectable people like Zack Snyder and okay, HBO yeah. and yeah. Uh, I'd like to pitch something to your pitch. <laughs> uh, who who plays? Put who, that pin down, Zack Snyder. <laughs> Put that cookie down. <laughs> what the hell? Um, who plays Lady Rorschach? Well, um, everybody wants R- Ronda Rousey to play everybody. <laughs> um, Ron- Ronda Rousey's uh, acting chops have yet to be vetted. Uh, she's I- been in three movies. Which movies? Hold on, let me try to remember. Uh, she was in... Ronda Rousey, The Untold Story, How to Train Your Rousey. <laughs> 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 No, no. Well, she's she's got a campaign right now to play Captain Marvel. Okay. That's what she wants to play. And there's a lot of people getting behind her on that. Even Marvel executives are like, yes, please do this. Um, oh, okay. But that's that's a marketability thing because everybody loves Ronda Rousey. I'm in the Ronda Rousey camp. Yeah. Um, but uh, I always thought of uh, the new Captain Marvel being a bit more glamorous than mm-hmm. I think of her as. Mm-hmm. I think of her as, you know... F- She's going to be a character. She's going to be gritty, white knuckle, seventies cop drama. You know what show is coming back that I think she should play in? Mm. Xena. She's a Xena to me. Here's the thing, and once again, she may be a fine actress. I don't know. I've never seen her in anything. But just going by archetypes, Xena is Xena's mean. Xena's not likable. Xena was likable because she was sexy. That's, I think Ronda Rousey can be mean. That's what's kind of cool about her. But the thing is, is like when you look at like her actual battles because she has them, right? You know, she's not the mean one. She's always got the moral high ground, or at least that's the narrative that follows over because that she... one Brazilian chick was such a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, she she has to me. She's kind of snarky. Which, is she? Yeah. In her real life, at least that's what that's some of the interviews I've seen with her. Like she's she's very confident, you know. They have to be. Yeah. Um, sidebar: Did you? Uh, oh, I know we talk we we talk about popular internet shows a lot for an internet show that's not popular. <laughs> <laughs> but um, did you uh, did you see the game theory talking about uh, Red versus Blue? No. Okay, so it's not about the show the RT the the Rooster Teeth show. Red, ver- red versus blue. It's about uh, the fact that we use um, red and blue in uh, competitive games as sort of like the default colors right. for opposite sides. And what they found out is that um, you would assume, looking at just color choice, particularly when um, the players don't have a choice on what color they're going to be, that it would be a 50 50 split. Red's not better than blue. Red is better than blue. Mm-hmm. Red wins out like like fifteen percent more. Really? Yes. Hmm. In competitions where reaction time and aggressiveness are um, are rewarded, so things like um, multi uh, multiplayer shooters, things like Halo. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, versus blue actually has the same skew when the games are strategy related. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Um, and that really is interesting to me, being someone who plays a lot of uh, Halo multiplayer, because I never think about my own color, though. That's what's weird about that. I only think about what they, what color they are. That's exactly that. That that's exactly the problem. When we see someone in red, we see power right. and aggression. We're intimidated a little exactly. bit. Exactly. But blue is like they're innocent, or they're they're at least weak willed, and we're gonna, you know, overpower them. Um, I'm gonna bring it up real quick. Um, just so um, I heard of this list recently, but I completely forgot what it was. Ronda Rousey was in the Expendables three, Furious seven. Entourage. She played. She played a little bit in uh, that. Not. I'm sure it was only a cameo. Um, and uh, she is slated to play in Patrick Swayze's uh, role in, Ra- in uh, Roadhouse. 
And the re- That's going to be awesome. Yes. I literally almost <laughs> sweared. <I was> like, <laughs> that's like that's yeah. like the role for her. Yeah, that's be- happening. Because what is dirtier and grittier and just going to crack your bones and take your teeth out and going to poop in the mouth that I took the teeth from? But Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse. House. Roadhouse. <laughs> no, that's... Family guy. That, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, Ronda Rousey as Rorschach... I don't think so. Yeah, Rorschach. Rorschach was a thinker, and not that. And once again, this is going to make it sound like I don't think Who Ronda Rousey chick? is smart. But Ronda Rousey's aggression and strength incarnate, and that's not what uh, what Rorschach is. Right. He's he's slow and methodical, and it's because he's actually weak. He's a small person. Right. Um, he has no powers of his own. He has no formal training of his own. He's probably malnourished, and I would be surprised if he's not addicted to Adderall. He's one of those characters, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they even make a they even make a point in the movie when he's uh, when he's finally arrested. They take off his mask, and one of the SWAT members is like, "Oh my God, he stinks!" Yeah, you know, you th- you think of him as being almost decayed. He doesn't give a shit about no. anything. He the only thing he cares about is cleaning up that city. He is he is the gritty smelly hobo version of batman dogs get put down <laughs> yes exactly I love that line <laughs> uh, my favorite line from him is when he's in the 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 tra- the, the the uh, line for the, the you know getting getting his lunch at um in the uh in the uh prison mm-hmm. he's like you guys just don't understand i'm not locked in here with you you're locked in here with me Least favorite line has got to be when he's taking out uh, big figures, thugs. Yeah, and he, yeah, he uh, he kills one of them with a the toilet, and he's like, huh. getting rid of filth with the toilet. Obvious, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think who would who would do it really well as far as that uh, that role of the female Rorschach would be Rooney Mara, and I couldn't remember her name, so I had to look it up really quick. But she's she played uh, the girl in the the, dra- the girl with the dragon tattoo. You know, I've only ever seen trailer stuff for that, so I don't have a good sense of what it's, she looks. It's really like. a, a it's re- picture. Yeah, this is her, not in her, um, and you can't see it here. You don't really. I don't. She looks very lovely and nice in this picture. Mm-hmm. But when you see her, I've seen her promo stuff. It, this, yeah. uh, this is actually the kind of picture that I needed. Okay, yeah, but she plays kind of a damaged, smart, intelligent role in mm-hmm. in that movie. That's that's exactly the same type of role. Mm-hmm. And I think she would go great. She's she all she would have to do is play up maybe the damaged part, um, and of that of that character. Okay, so in order to make this uh, this female Rorschach character work in all the ways that we uh, that we slated it with the uh, ten years uh, passing, um, does that mean we need all new Watchmen to 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 mirror her? Hell, do we need all new Watchmen because the other ones are big stars and so we can't get them for the series? Well, I think the way that, that the show ended, a lot of them probably are, are completely disinterested with being a Watchmen now. Okay. I think that's the way that, that, that movie end, ended. So, yeah, I think it would be a lot of new Watchmen. Um, for sure. So, sort of like... like The, orig- the original Watchmen was really the second generation. Yes. The only, the only, <coughs> the only holdover was the comedian. He was the only one who was who. Pretended. Oh, he lasted throughout the entire thing. But when the when the story was when it was present day, it was his death that started the movie. Right. But the movie isn't about the Watchmen, the super team that existed. Right. Pretty much five years before the events of the movie. Right. Um, but he he was the only one. That was like from the beginning. He lasted the longest. Yeah, he was yeah. a minute man. Yes. Um, so uh, the watch the Watchman really follows the story of the second generation of superheroes that was started by uh, that was started by Night Owl. So, do you think a full third generation works? Yes. Do you want to see Night Owl three, or do you want to see new characters? New characters mostly. Okay, and I think even with the Rorschach female Rorschach character, we're pitching. Um, it doesn't need to be. She doesn't have to have a mask that looks like a Rorschach test. It just needs to be I don't inspired get, by. I don't get the point. If not, I really don't. <laughs> you really don't. From a marketing standpoint, and I don't get the. Oh, point. marketing sport standpoint, I yeah. get it. Um, but you basically can't sell um, 
Yes. Anything the, without that. The way I see this happening, if it's going to happen the way we're we're thinking, uh-huh. um, that character this would need to be this would be this would need to be a show that starts off very close, very soon after the events of the Watchmen movie. Yes, because it gets rid of Doctor Manhattan. Right. And you need him out of the way. Yeah. So my my idea is what I'm th- what I'm thinking is they're going to do it. It's going to be like a very much like almost like a Batman Begins. It's almost like a, a rebooting of everything in a way. These are new superheroes. Let's see them from the beginning before they have a, a um, you know, the whole thing, a mask and a name and everything. Mm, no, no. I like that. I would like I would like this female Rorschach character to not get her. Her, her Rorschach mask on until the last episode of the first season. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you why. I'm just <sighs> done with origin stories. I don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> I don't care. The whole reason I cared in the first place was because you put on a weird costume and you beat up criminals. Well, okay, here, here. If, if that's the concern, do a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Start off with uh, the owl. What's, is it Night Owl or is it Owl? Night Owl. Now, Night Owl. Um, Night Owl and Archimedes. Yeah, that's right. Archimedes, the uh, ship. Um, no, start from him, right? And he's going to be fighting crime and doing whatever he does. Um, and then he can just take on a sidekick or he starts slowly building an, a team around him. Uh, maybe keep just one or two of the, the Watchmen that were in the old movie uh, and go from there. Build. From, he's basically building a new team. So it's, not necessarily, it's an origin story, yes, kind of, of those of those superheroes, but for him, it's not. Honestly, if uh, if we're going to advance time that much, I want to start in the thick of it. Like I want, I want there to be colorful characters that you introduce by something that they do. Hell, if we follow the events of Lady Rorschach, then we um, may, maybe okay. Just for example, maybe we'll do Hooded Justice Two, the second generation of Hooded Justice. Um, and Since so I had the noose. Yeah. So uh, there's so she runs into another hooded justice, and maybe they don't even talk, you know. Like they're like the Watchmen aren't coming together on purpose. They just happen to be cleaning up a mess that was left. Right. Especially since everybody thinks it's time to hunt down Doctor Manhattan. Hell, you could have Doctor Manhattan copycats uh, by that uh, by that same token. Yeah. Maybe all the watch. Maybe all of these new Watchmen could be misguided, not knowing. Um, not, not knowing the problems with, uh, not knowing the actual events of Doctor Man. Sorry, you doing? I had to reboot my phone because I couldn't get it to turn on. Um, they may not, they may not be privy to the events of Watchmen, so they are like sort of trying to figure out how to deal with Doctor Manhattan. Maybe there's another, uh, there, there's a genius or a billionaire. Who, who comes into play and maybe he's collecting superheroes I want to see I want to see superhero action off the bat and if they want to develop other characters that's fine but I want established characters ready to go right and I want them to be the characters that we follow in the instance of the uh, of night owl that's probably a character that we're gonna lose quickly yeah yeah that's probably true so. uh, I think I think we've given Zack Snyder enough ideas i think we can move on um i am gonna say that he should include the magic lasso okay and probably captain planet that's good that should be one of the that's a good call that's a good call um oh uh the uh the pilot episode should be called uh quiz custodias okay yeah translate who watches (laughs) 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 all right Okay, so you wanted to talk about something uh, that <laughs> that involves genital touching. Genital touching. Yeah. And and Zach Nanimus can say that because that's that's a science term. This is a medical procedure we're doing. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So lay back. Do you want to? Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Gonna, I'm not doing that. Um, did you want to just explain exactly what we're talking about? And I, I've got a lot to say on the subject. I was going to let you get the first crack at it before I just completely unload on everything. So, so some of you out there may be a fan of Westworld. It's something that's actually been rehashed over and over again. In 1974, Michael Crichton did this story. I don't know. I don't know if it was a novelette, short story, book, what have you. But this was a 
once again an amusement park, oddly enough, although he didn't write about an amusement park again until years later. Um, but Westworld was a futuristic amusement park where you could go and live out Western fantasies because there were robots abound that, you know, would shoot at you and, you know, you shot back at them and it was just supposed to be fun. There were, like, rules and there were there were ways to, like, lose this game. And I think it actually kind of hurt, um, I think, with an electric vest, maybe. Uh, like I said, I don't know much about the story. Um, I do know that... Uh, I, I want to say it was HBO again. Yeah. Pro- yeah. Uh, HBO is, uh, is uh, already casting a show based upon Westworld. Yes. It will be a show. Um, and there... <laughs> so, um, for, the, for those of you out there who are not cinematic thespians, um, they do these things called casting calls. And casting calls are pretty much commercials that you would see, like, in a newspaper, most likely online nowadays. And it gives you all the details that you need to know... What the role's about. What to expect. Yeah. Uh, what... Well, what it, it basically outlines what you need to be able to do and what you need to be willing to do. Right. We need a juggler. You have to juggle. Right. Yeah. Um, in in this casting call, they said uh, to be prepared essentially for or must be comfortable with genital to genital touching. And it's actually more descriptive than that. I actually have a direct quote from the uh, oh the bump, document that was signed. Bump and uglies like a defibrillator. Is that what it says? No, 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 no. <laughs> it says graphic sexu- sexual situations. Appear fully nude, perform genital to, genital to genital touching, have your genitals painted, simulate <laughs> oral sex. Sim, hold on, uh, please, please hold hold your laughter um, uh, until the end. Simulate oral sex with hand to genital touching, contort to form a table like shape while being fully nude, pose on all fours while others who are fully nude ride on your back. Ride on someone's back while you are b- both fully nude, and that's just the first five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but that—that's—that's that's the direct quote. Um, so, I think this is kind of a non-story. I think it's just people got up in a tizzy about it because it's had nudes things in it. I don't think so. I don't think it's a non-story, and that's why I push so hard for it to be in this show. I can explain. Do, would you, do you want to go, who wants to go first? You want to go first? Go ahead. Okay. So this is my whole thing on it. And I did write some notes so I wouldn't forget exactly what my point of view here was. Because um, I read the whole article. And essentially what happened was they had they had these people sign this document saying, this is what you have to do. This is what you agree to do. Um, and there was there is something wrong with that, I, I do believe. Because um, – but here's the thing. There are already safeguards against this. It, the mistake was in the casting – agency who 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 made people sign this and created this document hbo had did, had no idea sure that this was going on um and this is why i think it's kind of a non-issue i think it, that, that, that the fact that they did this was wrong because there are laws and, and agreements with uh i don't know if it's the actors guild or something like that but there's an organization that has laws in place that says if you before the scene takes place if you feel uncomfortable with a scene that has a nudity it actually has a specific two scenes that include nudity. You do not have to do it. You will not take penalties for doing for not doing it. You can break your contract even if you say you're going to do it. Right. Essentially, right? Right. Okay. Um, and so, so there is nothing that, that makes you pressure you into doing that scene. Um, now, what this document basically uh, said uh, contradicted that, but it was completely unenforceable. And it was it was basically something that someone thought it was a good idea to make this document a thing, and didn't know the law. They made a mistake. That's it. Um, I think it's interesting a little bit, but I don't think it's a big issue because I, I, it's it's already resolved itself because you you can't enforce that kind of thing. Oh, as a social issue, I I I don't think this is news. I think it's uh, it's just an interesting thing to learn about Westworld. Oh, okay. Because you know there are. Um, highly sexualized mediums uh, or medias, uh, can... cul- cultural cultural influences, right. and we're aware of how sexual they are. Right. The the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, for example, another uh, HBO show, Game of Thrones, has plenty of nudity. Mm-hmm. And like you you don't when you think Michael Crichton, you don't think sex. You don't. So like okay, one obviously. I, okay, maybe not obviously. Maybe, um, 
Maybe Westworld was a raunchy thriller that everybody just forgot about. I don't know. But I don't think so. I'm willing to bet not. Um, so, do you think that they're just using sex to use sex? Yes. <laughs> well, that that may be part of it. My immediate knee-jerk reaction is to say yes because it's on HBO. Because you can get away with it. But the thing is, is that Game of Thrones, which I also don't understand very well, but I know that there are sexual aspects to it, but they're not talked about a lot. Sex happens in that story. They are talked about quite a bit. Right. But sex happens in that story because sex actually happens. Right. It's a realistic take on the fantasy genre. It's not the, it's not the forefront. And when you look at all of the different things that Westworld is asking. The very, uh, yeah, the very left field things that are happening. They're very specific. About painting your genitals? Well, I think that has more to do with makeup. You're, you and your vagina is going to be in the makeup chair for at least an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Half an hour each. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, the whole, the whole table thing and, you know, you're going to simulate, you're going to, you're going to simulate fellatio while touching someone else. And it really, it just sounded like eyes wide shut being, to me being ridden. Okay. They, they said if they, if, if they were going, if they were going to, um, if they were going to have their actors, uh, simulate a sexual act where the male partner is behind the other, uh, the the female, they would have said that. Right. That's not what they said. They said ride them, right, like a horse, like a horse, like a horse. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to put that the most delicate way I could. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm curious. I'm curious to what extent it's going to be featured in the show because it might just be one episode. It could be just one. <laughs> it could just be like, what? Why is that funny? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> It's going to be like that one thing in season eight. It's going to be like Crichton's big ride. Or... <laughs> Crichton's big ride. Uh, yeah. Uh, we actually do need the verbal warning in this one. <laughs> we'll edit it in later. Um, but, okay. So, I guess, did did you answer my question? Are they using Are they using sex just to use it? I thought maybe my so my knee, my knee jerk reaction was that they're doing it just because they can on HBO. Okay. Because that's where you can do that. And maybe this is like the their whole oh we're losing Game of Thrones where we we need where, another nudity filled show. Yeah. For all the naked people to be on. In fact, there's some actors and actresses who only act if they can be nude. That's not really a thing. No, that is a thing. Is it a thing? Yes, they are. They're called butt doubles. Oh yeah, but that's different. That's just, uh, yeah, they, body they, body doubles. That's that's just a specialty. That's not because that's the only way they will act. That's the only way. That's their main talent. But they've been typecasted uh, as yeah, naked they, as butts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say yes. I mean, the thing is, is like, okay, let's look at let, let's look at another. Very under-publicized Michael Crichton work, The Andromeda Strain. When you think I finally watched that. Mm -hmm. When you think the Andr the Andromeda Strain, what do you think? Boring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was very disappointed uh, when I finally watched it. It's a very thoughtful piece. It's a very thoughtful. thoughtful piece. Yes, not a lot of visual stuff going on. Yeah, but you know that's kind of, that's kind of Crichton. When you think I do like Crichton for that though. When you think Jurassic Park, the book, what do you think? Um, uh, science. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of science and 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 uh, genetics and stuff like that. And once you know what, I, I think I think it's worth our time. Let's let's take a little break and learn about the West, uh, learn about the Westworld book specifically, guiding our searches and seeing how much sexual content there is. And we'll be right back. I think that's worth our time for the audience. You want us to go watch it right now? No, I think we should. I think we should learn about it online and see if sex plays a huge part. Okay. So we're back. Uh, we, yes. uh, we learned something about Westworld. Um, apparently, um, the whole cowboy amusement park thing was specifically for adults and it wasn't just, you know, playing, shoot them up at the OK, at the OK Corral. These, uh, these androids were there to fulfill every fantasy that somebody could have in the old West. An adult. An adult. Okay. And okay, but if you're an, if you're an adult and you want to have a child like fantasy there, you're allowed to. It doesn't. They're not they're not going to shoot you and then have sex with you. 
That's not by force. That's not what I was. <laughs> that's not what I was referring to. Uh, I'm referring to that it was just it, it was a theme park made for adults, and it's whatever their fantasies are. These robots uh, fulfill for them, especially Yul Brynner. Yeah. Apparently he was in the original movie. So I think that for this, they're just probably going to take it to the nth degree. This is about fantasy. And if it's going to be a series, they're going to have to delve into lots of different fantasies. And sexual fantasy is something that in America we... um, Frown upon? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say sensationalized, but yes, we frown upon it. Yes, we do. Yeah, we would much rather have violence, but... (laughs) That's a, that's a point that we've made many times in yeah. the show. Um, okay, so that being said, um, is this any particular draw for you? What, the sex? I, I like sex. What? Right. But, what are you asking me? Okay, given that Westworld is cowboys, Indians, and... Killer robots. Geni- and genitals. Um, yeah. And human horses. You put these all into the same spot, into the same pot, and you cook them up. Is this for you, Johnny? Are you are you glad that all these things are together? I'm curious. Okay. Would you say you're bipedal curious? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not as an active participant, but yeah, I, I would, I'd watch it, maybe. Okay. Um, me? Nah. Nah. Uh, when, mm-hmm. I, when I heard... One, you don't have HBO. Well, it's not TV, it's HBO. <laughs> 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 Just like saying that. Um... <laughs> The other thing is, is when I think when when I think Western, I think violence, and I I also Excuse think me. I also think paragons. You know, I don't really uh, I'm not huge into Superman stories unless they're told in the Old West. That's where I like to see my paragons. That's where I like to see people who can do no wrong and the yodeling cowboys and stuff like that. Um, what are you getting at? I'm just saying that this gritty look. At that, at that world isn't appealing to me. It's probably something that I'm going to avoid. You prefer a different ty- style of... I've it's not even a Western. I don't know why we're... Westworld? Yeah. Westworld is going to be a Western. It's not really, though. It's a theme park. That's... Okay. But all the theming in this park, the way people will dress, interact with one another... Um, fight one another will all be in the style of the Old West. It's kind of like... Um, Firefly was a Western. It had starships in it, but it was a Western. It was a space Western. Yeah, this is just a far-flung futuristic Western. It was a space Western. (laughs) They rode horses and shot six guns. Okay. (laughs) There are covered wagons in that show, and you know what? There will be covered wagons in this show. Another show we have looked forward to, this is my segue, uh, (laughs) is uh, X-Files. Do you have any emotion... That you would like to talk about when it comes to X Files coming back? No, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because I didn't care about X Files. I was I was very young. Do, do, do. Sorry, that was Doctor Who. No, it was yes, not. It was. Yeah. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Yes, you did. No, I did not do the drums. It was. No, because I'm not. Yeah, the higher I go, the worse I sound. Okay, the Doctor Who song goes thusly. That's different. Okay, Doctor Who does not sound like the X-Files. You're right, because the X-Files sounds like this. It doesn't. Okay, I took the clip out of the middle. Bong. No, it doesn't. Bong, 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 bong. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> anyway, you said you had no emotion, and this is why. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> can, somebody, can somebody take a video of my dance? <laughs> Hurry up. I'm working on it, Jesus. I, th- I think you're going to do music with this. Bong, 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 bong. Bung, 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 bung. <laughs> Just include that. No. Get, yeah, that's getting tweeted out when we launch when we release the episode. Just get that old chestnut. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? Okay, X-Files. so I was I was very young when this came out. Yeah. And um, 
it was it was very mature for my sensibilities at the time. It, this is a this is a block of programming that nobody seems to remember except for me. But there was like a Saturday night sort of thing. Like it was like no, maybe it was a Friday. I think night. it's Friday. Yeah, I think X Files came out on a Friday. Yeah, so like X like X Men was like right before X Files. It's like the adult programming started right here. And uh, my brother, Corporal Punishment, is uh, five is five years older than me, but he still enjoyed the X Men. So we would like watch these together. But I completely zonked out for X Files. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I didn't care, and I and I actually tried watching it recently. Um, and I've heard it doesn't it doesn't it, it doesn't uh, play well now. No, like, it's it's dated horribly. Yeah. But then again, um, I understand that there's a split in uh, X Files fans. Some of them love everything, right? And uh, some of them believe that X Files started going downhill in the later seasons. Well, um, Mulder wasn't there. Well, even before we lost Mulder, um, we also started getting more into paranormal versus extraterrestrial. Yeah. We were having stories about ghosts and the devil and uh, a chupacabra. Chupacabra, um, that that one uh, that one bus driver, you yeah. talk about her, she's got a face tattoo, nobody else seems to know about her, but you know she's there. Yeah. She's the late bus. Hey, I'm the one who's out late. Sue me. But <laughs> um, <laughs> No. It just seemed like it lost its heart to some of them. And I saw uh, one that was specifically about the devil. Yes. And it wasn't good. It was not a good show. Yeah. Didn't enjoy it. I, I had a weird relationship with the X-Files because I scare easy. And just sometimes the intro music itself would scare me. The intro uh, the intro is scary. That was one of the reasons. Yeah. Uh, so, no, the, the, intro is, the intro is very surreal. In fact, I, wasn't, I didn't sit down and I wasn't, I wasn't planning to watch it. I was... I was watching Clue, the, the channel Clue. Have you heard of that channel? No. It only does mystery shows, and so the Xbox, the Xbox, <laughs> the, the Xbox. We weren't supposed to talk about the Xbox in this episode, <laughs> Jack. They are having network problems. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, no, X Files gets a pass on Clue, and you know it was actually the intro that drew me in. I was like, oh, it's weird and it's '90s, but it's actually still pretty good. So maybe there's something there. Updated. I don't know. I'll, t- I'll tell you this much. Uh, I'll tell you. I will tell you. Okay, you know what? Go ahead. No, I've been talking for a while. Go ahead. No, I was gonna, all, all I was going to say was uh, Jillian Anderson is a um, very pretty lady. She's a very pretty lady. She's also a fine actor. Yeah. Watch her in The Fall. Watch that movie. Or not, it's not a movie. It's a show. I don't know what that is. It's on – I believe it's still on Netflix. Um, Are you sure? No, yeah, because Netflix just Are went through sure? a big dumping in – and then also receiving new uh, content, um, but the fall I went to a Chinese buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break in the middle. <laughs> but she is uh, that role. There's a lot of sexual overtones in that in that role she she uh, plays. Um, it's really interesting. So you brought that up just to objectify her? Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, that's that's one factor in in the reason I'm interested in watching. I X-Files. liked her in Freak the Mighty. Oh, well, there's that. There's a very large departure from the Scully character. But, okay, so what's your final word on X-Files coming back quickly? <sighs> I think that's not for kids. No, <laughs> there's something that feels, and I know I, I, I know that both David Duke of Knee <laughs> and, uh, and, Jill, and Jillian Anderson, I'm sure, are in places in their lives and careers where they didn't need the X-Files. This isn't a desperate attempt to make a car note. I, I know that. But there's some something about this feels like I'm going to relive the good old days. Sure. You know what I mean? And I know it's backed by popular demand and stuff like that, but there's something... Do you think, do you think it's going to be backed by popular demand in the style that um, Arrested Development was, where everybody wanted it to come back? It finally did, and then nobody watched it. That's the thing. I really enjoyed that season. No, I did too. But it, but overall, it did not. It did not get a good reception. They weren't going to be happy no matter what they got. That much. <laughs> um, to that, I am going to say no. Okay. I think that X Files fans are getting exactly what they want here. 
You're getting an old Scully and Mulder. Yeah. Fox Fox Mulder and Agent Scully. Agent is her first name. Right. That's what that's one thing I remember about the character, is that <laughs> she's very business. Yeah, she um, is. Dr. Scully, we could say that. Um, she's she's a medical doctor. She does the autopsies. Okay. That's also a cool thing about her. Um, I said to get to your point quickly. I'm trying to form it. God damn it. I quit. <laughs> All right, I'm back. <laughs> um, I think with updated visuals. Uh, one, one, of the big, one of the big hurdles. It's got a very 90s look to it. Right, but the thing, but I'm talking about special effects. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, I think with up with updated visuals is going to do is going to do something for this show that was a hurdle even back in the day when we were used to crappy effects. Right. You know, even back then they weren't doing their best to do great effects, and I think this time because it's so easy to do, you know, moderately impressive effects, it's going to bring it up to where it to where it needed to be initially. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. I'll watch it. Does that mean that they're going to be good at building suspense? Actually, probably. Because I bet that they have fans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I bet that the creative process for this has a lot to do with people who enjoyed X-Files. Right. So they must have an idea of not only what it's supposed to be, but also uh, how to make it better. Okay. So, yeah. I'm, you know what? Thinking through that lens, I'm very optimistic. Did you just completely flip-flop? Probably. Okay. <laughs> anyway, speaking of shows, uh, Netflix just recently um, dumped a lot of shows. They did. And they also brought – they're bringing in a lot – well, over the course of the month of October, they're bringing in a bunch more shows. Million Dollar Baby is coming to Netflix. I heard that I'm supposed to watch it. You haven't seen that? No. Yeah, you need to watch that. Okay. <laughs> and beware the stools. What? You'll know. You'll know. Oh. Does does uh does Clint Eastwood throw stools around? Is that his superpower in the movie? <laughs> that that'd be better than is what that, the reality was. Is that is, is Million Dollar Baby like the Six Million Dollar Man? No. Yes. No. <laughs> no. Speaking of the Six Million Dollar Man, uh, something that we didn't get to is what we're playing lately. No surprise, I'm still playing Metal Gear Solid. It's a dense game. There's a lot to get through. Uh, but you have a bionic arm. And um, every superpower that this arm gives you comes with the um, that comes with the Lee Majors Bionic Man. <laughs> Kidding it's me? It's beautiful. It really is. <laughs> is that really a thing? No, I'm serious. Because there's two abilities. There's the run. There's the running punch, um, and there is the. Uh, it's at, you actually can send out a shock wave that will read biological signals, so okay. you can mark things on the map. Um, and both of them have this sh- but yeah, that's all I got. I got. I'm gonna round this off with six million dollar baby. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's a movie about babies who are geniuses. No. Um, okay. But uh, before we sign off, uh, there is there there's exciting news. There's 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 exciting news, but it's bittersweet. Um, so, uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a contest going on, uh, sponsor, uh, sponsored in part by Game Over Games and uh, Oph- uh, Ophidian 2037... 2035, well, I think. 20, uh, 2035, which is a card game. And of course, we all need, know Game Over Games, your one-stop shop for re- uh, retro gaming hardware. Um, we, uh, we actually have a winner. And we're not, we're not going to... Did the contest end? No, the the con- the contest is, uh, has not ended yet, um, but that's that that's. Oh, he has won something, correct? Yeah, 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 we do. We do have a current winner, so our top our top prize is uh, is out of the way, but we still have four more prizes. Yeah, so you tweet at us uh, to win the prizes. You, so that'll be at Warlocks Brew, and you put hashtag Warlocks Giveaway. And don't forget to check out your local Game Over Games. They got a lot of great stuff, and I've always uh, I've always had tremendous service here. Fun anecdote: um, around the time it was p- basically Pokemon Gate, um, because uh, they had battery save. Basically, Pokemon cartridges never turned off. Oh right. Um, and they were offering to um, to switch out the battery in your Pokemon game for the cost of a battery. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's really really great service. I've always I've always had a lot of fun go, uh, going to those places, and they were uh, they were gracious enough to provide 
prizes that are going straight to you. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So go um, check them out for sure. I'll just reinforce that because there's a they have something. At least one of the locations has something that I really want to uh, reobtain um, from my childhood, mm-hmm. um, and that would be a um, Steel Battalion game and controller nice yeah and of course uh, don't forget to check out uh, War- uh warlocks entertainment system at uh, War- uh facebook uh slash warlocks games and beer yeah uh you can also check out Z- uh, zach and animus at fa- uh, facebook sla- uh, slash z a c h m n a n a m u s and of course you can go to war uh, warlocks inter- uh, warlocks es dot com is that correct our website? Yes. Our it's warlocksentertainment.com. Warlocksentertainment.com. And if uh, if you did enjoy the show and you want to support us, you're, uh, you're more than welcome to go and uh, support us financially, if you like, uh, at patreon.com slash warpod. Okay, and that, that being said, I think it's time to say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. This has been another proud production of the Four-Eyed Radio Network. You want to see more shows, go check out www.fouridradio.com, you winkers.